Hey friends, it's Nicole Fruit Chick here. Thank you for joining me for another YouTube review. Today I'm super stoked because I'm taking some beans from Bones Coffee Company, which if you've seen some of my other videos, you know have come up with some crazy coffee creations like Irish Cream and Fruit Loop. Well today I have a more preferred flavor. I have a salted caramel chocolate coffee that I turned into a cold brew using the Chef Man cold brew maker. So let's put them together and see what we get. So the Chef Man cold brew maker is a pretty simple maker. It only has three parts. You have this main glass carafe right here, which is where the cold brew is collected. You have the filter. Um, you've probably seen this type of cold brew maker before where you have a glass container and then the filter, which is also where the grounds are kept during the steeping process. You have that right there that is attached with a rubber lining and then you have the lid. And the lid goes on during the brewing process to prevent any oxidation and to also prevent any, you know, weird smells or flavors from your refrigerator getting into your cold brew. So, to start the process, the chef man recommends grinding 85 grams of coffee. Now, it also says to also fill the filter two-thirds full. When I first made cold brew with this maker, 85 grams wasn't two-thirds full. It was the entire filter. So which one should you do? My preference is to do the entire filter. So you know me, I like stronger cold brew and I'd rather my cold brew come out stronger at the end than weaker because you can always dilute it to your own preference. Plus I think it's easier to use if you just do the full filter. Sometimes we don't have scales, we're not able to you know, be as accurate as we like with making cold brew. And it's a lot easier if you don't have a scale or don't know what 85 grams looks like to just take your ground coffee and fill it all the way up. Easy peasy. So in that case, I don't have 85 grams of coffee. This is more than that, but we're just gonna fill it all the way up to the top. And it recommends doing a coarse to medium coarse grind. I recommend more coarse with this filter. And the reason why is that if you have any grinds that are finer than a medium coarse, you risk getting some sedimentation with the cold brew maker. This filter just isn't fine enough to get out all those little bits and pieces. And you'll, you'll have a little bit of sediment at the bottom of your um, maker if your grind is too fine. So always err on the side of caution and do it a little bit more coarse. This is uh, the 23 setting on the Encore Barazza. That grinder is my personal favorite. It's one that's been recommended to me by a lot of baristas because it's one of the more cheaper cold brews. Um, I'm sorry grinders and it's also very reliable. Um, I unfortunately don't have one. I get to borrow it from some friends and use it whenever I can. But the 23 on Encore Barazza is a good grind size to do. Oh, so that's pretty much like exactly what we need. All right, so we are right about to the top. And then the chef man instructions also say not an exact amount of water. They just say when you fill it up, to fill it up slowly and you want to fill it up to this max line right here. Now if you look, it has little indentations of how many cups are in the um, glass carafe. So the max is a little bit over four cups. So when you get your water ready, maybe aim for like five cups just to be on the safe side. And then the thing with these types of cold brew makers, you definitely want to make sure to pour the water slowly. So let's go ahead and add it in there. And the reason why you have to be careful with adding the water is that as you notice, it comes out kind of slowly from the filter. So what will happen is if you pour the water too quickly, the grinds and the water will start to rise and you risk overflowing your coffee grounds and making a big mess. All right, so we are just at our max. I think because I've used this a couple times, it actually fills up a lot faster. The first time you use a maker like this, you definitely wanna make sure, take that water very slow and make sure you're not overflowing because that's a mess you don't wanna clean up. But we are done, that is the entire setup. All you have to do is put a little lid on top and then it says to steep in your refrigerator for 12 to 16 hours. I did a full 24 because um, I wanted to get more of a concentrate and really taste the flavor that came out of the beans. But whatever floats your boat, you're totally good to go. Um, so let's go ahead and give this a try and see how it turned out. Alright, so we're all done. We have our cold brew concentrate. Chef Man does not have a recommended ratio of how much water or milk to dilute your concentrate with. Um, I think just because they want to do it based on preference, you know. 
even though this says that it is a colder concentrate, it may end up being a little bit weaker than a concentrate and maybe just a straight ready to drink cold brew. So let's give it a try and see how it is. Pours really cleanly, really nice. Um, as far as aroma go, this is the first thing you smell is that caramel. It's just like overflowing. I mean, what's so great about Bones Coffee is that the scent of their beans is fantastically strong. I mean, you can smell it through the bag. When you open the bag, it just kind of wafts out of there. When you grind it, it just inflates your house. When you brew it, you can smell it. Um, so that's one thing they for sure nailed down is the scent of the flavor that they're going for is spot on. Um, and that is just all you smell is that, that caramel flavor. Now, as far as tasting it, not quite there. You can definitely taste the caramel, um, but what overshadows it a bit too much is that kind of burnt coffee taste. And you'll know what I'm talking about if you've ever had Starbucks um, drip coffee. You know, it's a very distinct kind of like, and a lot of people say burnt. Um, the biggest compl like complaint about Starbucks coffee is that it tastes burnt or it tastes too bitter, um, which some people like, but I know it's a complaint that a lot of people have about their coffee. And you kind of get a hint of that with this cold brew. It has just that burntness that, you know, I don't mind, but I also don't really want either. I would want this to be a lot more smoother and I want to taste that caramel more. Um, there's been some artificially flavored caramel cold brews out there that I think have turned out better. They came out smoother, the caramel flavor is just more rich, um, and I kind of was hoping for something like that with this, which I'm not quite getting. Yeah, it's like right when I like am about to taste that caramel, that burntness just kind of comes over and overpowers any chance it has, um, which is a little bit disappointing. It still smells great though, which is cool. Um, so if you make this and grind it at home, you're gonna have a wonderful smelling house. As far as the maker goes, um, it was really easy to use, which I liked. It's very user friendly. It doesn't get too crazy with amounts or whatnot. I mean, you literally just fill it to the max line, fill your filter all the way up, and then you're good to go. I would say that ratio is pretty spot on, and I wouldn't call this a cold brew concentrate. Um, if you're someone that's newer to cold brew or coffee, you may wanna dilute this a little bit, but if you drink coffee on a regular basis or you really enjoy cold brew like me, you'll find that this is a very easy to drink ratio. You should have no problem with adding any water or anything like that. Um, my only caveat with this maker is that when you are done and you've taken the filter out, this top part right here, the lid, doesn't fit back on the maker once you're done. It only fits when you have the filter attached, which is a little bit annoying because once you're done and you have your finished cold brew product in here, you have nothing to cover this. Make sure you could use, you know, plastic wrap or, you know, aluminum foil to kind of put it over it, but I would want a lid to have over this to, again, prevent any flavors or weird odors from my fridge influencing my cold brew. Um, so that is a negative, I would say, at the makers, that there is no lid for your finished product. Of course, you could always just transfer this over to a jar or another glass, um, but that's just another step that you really shouldn't have to do. You should be able to just keep this in here as it is and enjoy it. I mean, it has a handle, it has a little spout. It's meant to be poured. Um, so that's one downside. As a cold brew, I would give this a 3 out of 5. Um, it's not as smooth as I would like. It's definitely drinkable, definitely something I would enjoy. Um, I just was expecting a little bit more and have had better caramel cold brews. Um, and it could be that, you know, these beans were really just designed to be enjoyed hot. And, you know, I'm sure maybe as a hot coffee, especially with the aroma that comes out with hot coffee, that this is a better experience. Um, and that might be something to try and see how it is. Um, but as a cold brew, three out of five, just not quite as smooth and not quite as flavorful. Hey friends, thank you so much for checking out my video. Don't forget, Cobra Trick is more than just a YouTube. I also have a blog, a podcast, and an Instagram where I'm highlighting all the best of the cold brew industry. To check out all my other content, check out the links below, and I'll see you next time.